Hi booktube! Welcome back to the Babbling Bee, and I am here, finally, late, but not never, to tell you about the books that I read for middle grade March. So first of all, I would just like to say that I enjoyed middle grade March so much. It was such a lovely reading month and I can definitely see myself just making it a thing every single year that I just kind of set aside all of my other reading um, and focus on middle grade during March because it just felt like infusing my reading life with like the roots of what I love about reading, like stories that pack a punch with simplicity, stories that like touch your heart and touch on like some of the most meaningful things about the human experience, um, written beautifully, written in an engaging, like fast-paced, easy to read way, um, but just still really beautiful. So yeah, I just fell in love with middle grade all over again uh, during the month and I'm so excited to make middle grade reading more of a thing in my reading life from now on. So um, I'm gonna try to go through this fairly quickly, not that there's like tons of books, but I do just need to make this a shorter video today. Um, so yeah, let's just get right into it. These are not in order of like like the order that I actually read them in during the month because I've slept since then and I can't remember. But yeah, so in no particular order, um, these are the books that I read during middle grade March. So first of all, I read The Magic Half by Annie Barrows, which was gifted to me by a friend from work. Um, and I was actually interested in this one because, is this book on my shelf up here? No, it's not. Okay. I was going to grab it for you, but um, my interest in the magic half um, sprang from my love of the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society, which Annie Barrows co-authored. Um, and I just, I love and adore that book so much. And when I saw that she had written a middle grade, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get that in my life. So I was so excited when my friend uh, got this for me. And this was such a delightful read. I would say this is not like a middle grade that um, is full of like epic sweeping emotion. Um, it's not going to make you like cry and get goosebumps maybe. I mean maybe it will, but for me I, I considered it just more of like the light side of middle grade where it's just like a fun and charming story, nothing too heavy. Um, and yeah, so this tells the story of a young girl called Miri, who is always kind of like the odd one out in her family because she has um, younger siblings who are twins and older siblings who are twins. So she just always feels like she's by herself. And um, her family have just moved into this like big old house, which is definitely like on my list of uh, bookish boxes. Um, and her bedroom is in the attic, which is also like a big winner for me. Um, and in her attic bedroom, she makes a discovery uh, that she can kind of go back and forth uh, in time to visit another little girl um, who used to live in her house. And uh, she realizes that she kind of has a responsibility to fix this other girl's life and help her out. And yeah, it was just a fun, delightful story um, dealing with themes of like finding family in an unexpected place, uh, friendship, uh, discovering and enacting your own potential. Um, it was funny in, in places, so that was enjoyable too. And yeah, this was definitely just like very gratifying for my inner child, like my my inner 10 year old would have absolutely loved to curl up with this book on rainy afternoons and just get lost in it. So yeah, a very fun and delightful read. And then this was kind of on my like to do list for middle grade March, if you will, like a book that I had already started before the month, but I was really determined to finish it. And that's Betsy Tacey, um, the first book in the Betsy Tacey series by Maud Hart Lovelace. 
Um, this is a Kate Howe made me do it book, uh, because I have just heard her talking up this series so much, and I knew that it was something that I needed in my life, and it was an absolutely delightful reading experience. I don't really feel like I have too much to say about it, um, because I have some distance from it now, but also because it's a fairly simple story, like, the, the girls are really young in this one, so, um, it's, it's just very light and lighthearted. I mean, there are some, like, deeper or slightly darker things that happen in it, but, uh, in general, it is just a light, sweet children's story. And I also loved the very charming, um, illustrations in this one. I don't know if you can see that, but yeah, uh, that added to the reading experience for sure. So it was great to check that one off of my list. And then this was a very big deal in my middle grade month of reading. This is The Secret of Roan Inish by Rosalie K. Fry, which I wanted to read this one because the film version of this, which this is like the movie version of the, um, of the cover, the film The Secret of Roan Inish is like arguably my favorite movie. Like, I, I adore that film. I have watched it an indecent amount of times, um, and I've loved it since I was a kid. So I have had this book on my radar for a long time, and in middle grade March, I was like, that's it. I've got to do it. I need to experience the book that basically my favorite movie is based on. So this tells the story of a girl named Fiona who um, is kind of sent off away from the city to live with her grandparents who live on the coast uh, in Ireland, and her family um, traditionally come from this island uh, called Roninish, and um, they've been kind of like broken up by having to leave the island. Um, like throughout the generations of Fiona's family, they have just like sustained themselves from the island and lived and worked there and it's like their their sole home, you know what I mean? Um, but the island has since been like evacuated, people have gone off to get jobs in the city. Um, so this book is kind of looking at like Fiona discovering her family history and learning about the island and why it's so special to her family. Um, she's getting handed down like stories that have been handed down throughout the generations of her family. Um, and then at the heart of this book is Fiona searching for her lost little brother who um, disappeared one day. He was like carried away by the waves in his little cradle and everybody just assumes that he's dead. And Fiona kind of starts to suspect that maybe that is not the case. So it's it's a very quiet story. It's a story about home and family and stories within stories, um, which is always something that I love. I would say that at the end of my reading experience of this book, I really enjoyed it. It was a lovely, cozy, heartwarming read. Um, it was great to get to know the characters a little bit more um, and to see like that their names got changed. I don't really know why that is a thing uh, in the process of moving this from a book to a screenplay, but like the characters that I have known by certain names all my life were not called that in the book, so I was like, what? Um, but yeah, it was a lovely reading experience. I think I just still ultimately love the film more. I think the film um, is very respectful to this book, but it kind of like ekes out even more of its like mystical or folklore kind of qualities. Um, and it just feels a little bit more magical to me, but very glad that I could check that one off of my list as well. And then this, uh, was unplanned. So this is the book that ended up replacing my, uh, TBR pick of Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. I did not end up reading Ella Enchanted during the month. Um, I wanted to get to it, but I just happened to be in the mood to read The Secret Garden, and I ended up actually listening to this on Audible, um, read by Carrie Hope Fletcher, and it was absolutely delightful. I am so glad that I revisited this book. It had been absolutely years since I read this story, 
Um, another childhood favorite, another favorite movie of mine. Um, I'll link the version of the movie that I prefer um, in the description box. But yeah, I just think that this is such a perfect story for when you're kind of like waking up from winter and needing to like find your hope again and you're like zest for life, even though that's such a horrible expression. Um, but yeah, it just, it really like dusted off the cobwebs of my reading and I was just reminded of how much I love this story and the characters in it. Um, I loved listening to the beautiful Yorkshire accents in the audiobook, so I would highly recommend uh, giving that a go. But yeah, this was honestly like one of my favorite reads of the month by the time I got done with it. I was just so glad that I had done it. So I was sad to not make it to Ella Enchanted, but that's okay. We don't have to get to all of our middle grade reading <laughs> in middle grade March. Um, and this was just so delightful that I refuse to regret the fact that it, um, it replaced that book. So that's that one. And then I also thoroughly enjoyed my read of Miracles on Maple Hill by Virginia Sorensen. It was so fun to get to be one of the like co-hosts of this read-along. Um, and it was so delightful to get to discuss this book uh, on Zoom with all of the other lovely hosts and the people who joined us in our discussion. Um, everybody else's like input and thoughts on the story and the characters made me love this story even more and think about it in new ways. So yeah, I just love reading books along with people and chatting about stories with people who um, either like it or don't like it. I mean, getting both sides of and like multiple different perspectives on the same book is so valuable um, and so interesting. So yeah, this story is so sweet. Another good one. I mean, I feel like this is a really good companion book to The Secret Garden in some ways because both of these stories are about like waking up from winter and reconnecting with your hope and your belief that like life can be good and it can continue even when things are hard. Um, this one particularly focuses on kind of healing uh, connections between the members of a family um, and it is also tied up in like a house and a landscape and a setting that has magical qualities to it, which I am just a sucker for. So yeah, this was another very enjoyable middle grade read. Oh, and also um, I loved the sweet little illustrations in this one as well, and that definitely added to the experience. And then finally, this book did exactly what I expected it to do, and basically became my favorite read of the entire month. This is Raimi Nightingale by Kate DiCamillo. I just love everything that Kate DiCamillo does. I have loved every book that I have ever read by her, and every book that I have ever read by her has made me stop and read sentences and read entire paragraphs over and over again just to savor them, just to let them, like, settle on me because she just writes... She, she is a shining example to me of the fact that brilliant prose does not have to be extremely complicated for the reader. Like, Kate D. Camillo writes in such a simplistic way, such a childlike way sometimes. Like, I think she captures the voice and the experience of, of young people so well. Um, but at the same time, she conveys so much beauty and so much poetry in her prose, but without it being like overly flowery or overwhelming to read. And I just admire that so much. Um, and I love this story. I loved uh, getting to know Raimi and her friends that she meets in this book um, and following them on their adventures over this summer. Um, this follows the story of Raimi, uh, whose father has left home and she gets it into her head that if she can win the Little Miss Central Florida Tire Competition, uh, her dad will see her picture in the newspaper and come back home. And she meets these two uh, interesting friends uh, over the course of her Little Miss Central Florida Tire Competition training, uh, and they have adventures together. This book looks at so many themes, I can't even address them all here, 
Um, but just to name a few, it looks at the power of friendship to support us when we feel stuck and like we just can't continue on our own. It looks at um, the difference between like the perspective and experience of age uh, and being young. Uh, it looks at loss, it looks at grief, it looks at um, like resilience and the power that young people have to stare their problems in the face and keep going. I just, I could go on and on about this book. It is beautiful, it is powerful, but it's also just fun and enjoyable to read. And again, that's something that I love about Kate DiCamillo so much, is that she makes it so easy on you. She doesn't make it difficult, she makes it easy to turn the pages, easy to get lost in the story, but by the time you're done you're like, what did I just read? So yeah, I loved this so much. But yeah, overall, like I said, it was a wonderful um, month of middle grade reading, and I was so pleased to be able to get to almost everything on my TBR, plus uh, one surprise guest who uh, was kind of uninvited, but welcome all the same. So yeah, I hope you had a wonderful month of reading in March. Let me know if you participated in middle grade March, um, or if you just had a particular favorite read from the month that was not middle grade. I would also love to know that. I hope you guys had a cozy weekend and I hope you have a lovely cozy bookish week ahead and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!